simply because that unites the Muslims again. That's something that other religions don't have. They don't have a common language. Whereas we should not forget in the Middle Ages, they tried to have a common language, which was Latin. But the people who knew Latin were the clergy. Okay? Nobody else in Germany at that time, peasants or whoever, or in this country, knew Latin at that time. Latin was something for the clergy. So it became an elite language, actually, until it died out in the end. Arabic is not the same. So all Muslims are Arabs. Now I think we have all come across, we have all realized that this is not entirely true. Arabs make only 15% of the world's Muslim population, by the way. 15, one five. The biggest Muslim country in the world is? Sorry? Okay, it's actually, actually it's Indonesia. India has a very, very, very big minority of Muslims, but it's still a minority in the country. It's not a Muslim country. But indeed, India has a very, 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 very big minority. But Indonesia is the biggest country. The biggest Muslim country in the world is Indonesia. And it's not Saudi Arabia. Not at all. Okay? So, Arabs, 15%. The Middle East in general comes in third, with East Asia coming in first, and Africa coming in second. So the main area of the world is not the Middle East, okay, with most Muslims, as people believe. But the first one of all is East Asia, countries like Malaysia and Indonesia, okay? These countries are number one with regards to population. With regards to um, second, on, on, on number two is Africa, 27%. The African continent has then next second biggest population of Muslims in the world, and then the Middle East, with the Arabs, of course, being um, number one in the Middle East. Now, again, what we mentioned before, the Arabs, among the Arabs, there are also Christian Arabs. If you go to Egypt, Egypt has a big minority of Christian Coptic um, 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 Egyptians, 10 to 12 percent. If you go to Syria, you will find a big Christian minority. You know, if you go to Lebanon, a massive Christian minority. Actually, if it's a minority, it's a question here, all right? So if you go to other countries, North Africa, even Tunisia, which is known for being actually entirely Muslim, you will find Jews and Christians. And in the past, before this, the formation of Israel, there were even many more Jews you know, in the Muslim world. And by the way, Jews were living among the Muslims for centuries, for centuries. And anti-Semitism, just to make this a point here, it's a wrong word. Anti-Semitism, by the way, the Arabs are also Semites, so anti-Semitism is not the right term, but I'm using it now because it has become a common term. So anti-Semitism with regards to hating the Jews is not a Muslim issue, okay? It's not among the 10 misconceptions that I have here, but I will mention this as well because I find it an important point. People think that we as Muslims hate the Jews. No, they are also people of the book. There are Muslims, just to make this a point again, there are Muslims who will tell you, yes, I hate the Jews, okay? Yes, they will say that. But they don't hate the Jews as Jews because of their religion, because that would be haram. That would be forbidden in Islam, because they are one of the people, the three people of the books, the Christians, the Jews, and the Muslims. So we have to live with them together as we did. The problem is the state of Israel, 1947, the formation of that state, the Zionist ideas. The ideology, and not Judaism, okay, is the political ideology, Zionism, and not Judaism. Never was. Now, misconception number nine. Oh, sorry, any questions with regards to this one? I would like you, please, comment, criticize, whatever you want. Please, don't, I don't want you to wait until the end. I don't want you to wait. Just say whatever you want to. You know, no problem at all. Yes, please, brother. Um, well, look, um, everybody, you know, thinks that that's what a Muslim looks like, all right? That's exactly the idea, and simply because through the media and through the idea of the Gulf Arabs, of course, yes, and, um, and, and the wealth that is there, yes, I think that's one of, the, that one of the ideas why there's a misconception like this, no doubt about it, yes. Actually, yeah, everybody thinks that we all look like this, right? Bedus and whatever. So, now this is just one idea. Certain people look like this. All right, and they are Bedouins, and they are Arabs, and they, you know, and so they, they, yeah. But that's not the majority of Islam of the Muslims, and that's not that's not uh, uh, an, an an obligation in Islam to look like this. Okay, yes, but um, can you go? What does it say in the Quran in relation to um, Muslims and uh, Jews collaborating, not collaborating, but in harmony and stuff like that? 
There are many passages. I don't have the passage. Good. Uh, well, okay. Uh, there are many passages in the Quran. I don't have the exact passages in front of me now, but I can check them while we have a break or something. But there are many passages in the Quran that tells you clearly that these are people of Ahl al-Kitab, the people of the book, okay? And that we are not allowed to even convert them. We, are, we should tell them, we should tell the Jews and the Christians about Islam, but conversion is in the hands of Allah. This is not the aim of a Muslim, okay? One of the tasks of a Muslim in this life and that's what I'm trying to do, is to give through information about Islam. Because I will be judged at the end. You know, the people who were around me, not only the people whom I spoke to, who I saw maybe once in my life, but what about my parents? My parents have not accepted Islam. So that's an obligation upon me to tell them so that later, if when we are judged, when they are judged and I am judged, I'm clean. I, I, I told them what I had to say. But it's not in my hands if they accepted Islam or not. This is their problem. This is anybody else's problem. This is, you know, I just give through what I have to say. That's it. Okay, furthermore, everything is here. So that's it. There is nothing else. So with regards to the Jews, the same thing. We were living with Jews throughout all the centuries that Islam exists. The Jews were living in a Muslim country. And not, and not only were they living in Muslim countries, but if you look at Al-Andalus, Spain and Portugal, by the way, two countries in the Iberian Peninsula, if you look at the way that the Jews were living and the blossoming and, and flourishing of the culture, and later, when the Jews were kicked out by the Catholic Queen and, 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 and King in, in, in Spain, in Granada, the last city of Spain, 1492, when they were kicked out of there, who took the Jews? Where did they go to? To the Ottoman Empire. They went to the other Muslims. They left the Arabs and they went to the Ottoman Empire. Because then in the end, there were no Arabs anywhere to protect them. And that's, that's sad reality. That's history. That's sad reality. So whenever there was something, and if you look at Jewish culture flourishing, it flourished two or three times, mainly in the Muslim world. In Al-Andalus on the one side, in the Ottoman Empire on the other side. And the problems exist since 1947, not before. So again, it's a Zionist idea. It's not the problem of Jews being a Jew. So I don't see a Jew on this. I know there are Arabs here. I have Arab friends myself who really you just tell, talk about Jew, and they go mad, berserk. Okay? It's a Hebrew word, by the way, bizarre. <laughs> they go mad, right? So why? That's a Jew, yeah. But there's an emotional connection because of, you know, I mean, I have friends from Lebanon. And um, he had to leave Beirut that time in the 80s when the Israelis invaded Beirut. He had to leave. All the, close, all the schools closed down. And people could not go to school and universities anymore. Many of them have had lost uh, relatives in the war with the Israelis. So it's a logical thing, I think, as a human being to have emotional, emo to be emotionally negative towards people who came and invaded your country. Absolutely not logical. A Palestinian, I find it absolutely logical for a Palestinian to have emotionally, you know, to have a negative attitude towards the Jews. But not because they are Jews, because of the past, because of the history. Can you click on that? Next one. Now, real, the Arab world, just to give you an idea, actually, I'm sitting like it. Normally, I don't sit, but you know, because of the camera. Right? So now, now the, Arab, the world, Arab world, Arabic is the sole official language of the blue nations, the ones that you can see all the way in North Africa, and of course, the Arab Peninsula, and one of the official languages of the red nations, okay? Countries like Sudan, which nowadays is divided, of course, we have South Sudan, North Sudan, right? And Eritrea, Ethiopia, um, Eritrea Somalia, all right? So these are countries that have... Um, Arabic as a second language or language that is a, together with another language, an official language. All right. So it gives you a little bit of an idea. But they are not more. They are not more than 15% of the entire Muslim world. Okay. And everybody refers to Islam and to the Muslims when they refer to this area. And there are many Christians and Jews still living in this area. Okay. Next one. Now. The Muslim population by country, it, get, it gives you an, a better idea if you just take a general look at it. Um, the, there are Muslims everywhere in the world. Okay? Muslims are really everywhere in the world. I went to countries where I did not expect to find Muslims. And uh, it, it, it is for a Muslim traveler, and I do travel a lot. It is something important because you're trying to find somewhere to pray, although we can pray anywhere, but still you're trying to find you know, the community. You're trying to find some people who live there. Also, sometimes, you know, when you speak the language, you would like to communicate with the people from there. Um, we, of course, you're looking for food, which is halal, and so on and so on. So all this is quite important, actually. I'm going to sit again, inshallah. Don't worry, Anna. <laughs> so <clears throat> you will find Muslims everywhere, okay? So it gives you a general idea. 
But of course, the red part, Africa especially, Africa and the Middle East,